50 meters, turn right. to get into any of these assured pathways. 
for medicine and dentistry, your minimum ATAR is 99, <coughs> or if you're eligible for Broadway or rural, or an international student, your minimum is 96. There is an admissions test called UCAT that you need to sit. We'll talk a little bit about that later. And there is an interview. For paediatric medicine and pharmacy, your minimum ATAR is 94, and there's also an interview for that. So getting in is very competitive. So you want to go for your highest possible <coughs> ATAR. Meeting the minimum doesn't get you in. Meeting the minimum gets you into the, into the eligibility for ranking for a place. Again, if anyone missed that URL, grab it now. And next we're gonna talk about the prerequisites. So what ATAR subjects should you be looking at? For the assured pathways, English is a must for getting into any undergraduate degree program in Australia. So you can do English ATAR, English literature, or English as an additional language or dialect. There's also the stat test and various other ATAR equivalent English that are also accepted. Because we've got a bachelor degree postgraduate model, we can be a little bit more flexible about the ATAR subjects that you need to take. For example, if you want to get into medicine or dentistry and you haven't done chemistry, that's okay. You can do a chemistry unit during your bachelor degree and be ready for your postgraduate studies. We do recommend you study chemistry, biology or human biology, and also maths applications or higher. These will give you a little bit more flexibility in structuring your first year studies. All right, so we'll talk a little bit about the UCAT now. Has anyone signed up for UCAT already? <coughs> if you're in year 12 and you're wanting to apply for medicine or dentistry, you need to register for UCAT. The registrations close on the 17th of May, so get onto that if you haven't already. Take a note of this web address. This is the official web address for UCAT ANZ and you'll find a lot of preparation material available to you for free via that web address. If you're not in year 12 yet, you can start looking at that preparation material if you want to. It's all there for free, you don't have to be registered. So UCAT's an aptitude test. It's testing your reasoning skills, decision-making, quantitative reasoning, and situational judgment. The situational judgment section will present scenarios to you that you might encounter in a clinical sort of situation and then you've got multiple choice to choose the answers that you feel are most appropriate. However, UCAT doesn't expect you to have a high level of clinical or scientific knowledge. It's more testing your ability to read and analyse information that's presented to you and to make decisions based on that. So again, the preparation materials are free. If you want to go straight there, that's the full URL for that. For the situational judgment section, you'll probably find it useful to have a look at the Medical Board Code of Conduct. And if you look at the example questions from all the sections of the test, it'll help you to structure how you prepare. Interviews are another component of the selection process. So for the interviews, they are a structured process and they're designed to give every applicant <coughs> the same experience in the interview and you end up with an interview score which is used as part of the ranking for course offers. They're usually face-to-face. -face. Of course, with the situation being what it is now, we do keep an eye on that and if changes are necessary, we keep the applicants informed. Interview periods are specific you need to be able to attend at the time when you're invited. So it gives you an opportunity to increase your competitiveness for a place. It's not designed to eliminate the applicants. For school leavers who don't have their final result, we will assess eligibility for interview based on the predicted <coughs> ATAR result. If your predicted ATAR doesn't qualify you for an interview, but your UCAT score does, then we will look at your actual result and you'll be interviewed in January in that case. <coughs> so if you're shortlisted for an interview, we'll provide you with a lot of information about the interviews and how to prepare and sort of topics that will be covered. You do need to be able to talk about 
your motivation for why you are looking at that specific career that you're being interviewed for and also think a little bit about what you might expect from your learning experience and your longer term professional career. So within our cohort of places, we have various quotas. Their places are limited and we want to get the best students into those courses from a diverse a range of backgrounds. So we have Indigenous quotas, international, rural, Broadway and high academic achievers. The high academic achiever quota is the largest quota and that's the one where you need the HR of 99 to be eligible. So if you identify as an Australian Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander, contact the admissions team or visit the School of Indigenous Studies today to find out about pathways for you. You take down this information, you can have a look at what's on the website and get in touch with the school that way as well. <coughs> Do we have any international students in the room? Can't see, just in case. So for international students, your applications for these assured pathways are open now. You do need to get your application in by the 31st of May. If you've got any queries or worries about it, come down and talk to us at the Future Students Hub and also you can visit our website at any time for more information. International students who are applying for medicine and dentistry need to sit the international student admissions test, not the UCAT. So if you're an international student, you don't need to sit UCAT, you need to sit ICAT. For domestic students, the applications will be via TISC. So if you keep an eye on the TISC website for their timelines, they did vary their timelines a little bit for last year's applications. So usually the applications would open around August and for medicine and dentistry, paediatric medicine and pharmacy will close on the 31st of September. Or oh, well maybe the 30th, because I think the 31st of September doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, apply by the 30th. If you are not sure whether you want to apply for medicine, but you're kind of mm, maybe, maybe not, dentistry, pharmacy, cardiac medicine, put those preferences in before the due date because you can always take them out if you decide definitely, no, you don't want to do it. But we cannot accept late applications. So if you're in doubt, put them in before the due date. Now, some people think there's some kind of strategy involved with applying, particularly for medicine and dentistry, being very, very competitive. But the main point that I want to make is apply for courses you actually want to do. So having all of the health science courses in your TISC application doesn't increase your chances of getting into the one you really want to get into. So unless you're actually interested, don't put them in. When the offers come out, that's when your preference order becomes very, very important because you only get one offer and that is for your highest preferred course that you're actually eligible for. But uh, think about that a little bit later in the year. For now, just look out for when the TISC application is open and put those preferences in before the due date. Dentistry and Medicine, sign up for UCAT or if you're international, ISAT. Last chance for the URL. Everyone's got it. I can see some excellent. <coughs> now, if you don't get in from high school this year, there is graduate entry as an option. Or if your ATAR meets the minimum but you didn't get an offer for next year commencement, you can consider taking a gap year, retain your status as a school leaver and apply again next year. To retain your status as a high school leaver, that means you don't commence in other bachelor degree courses or vocational training at diploma level or above. You could do certificates one through four, you could do volunteer work, you could get a job, but you just can't start on tertiary education to be considered a school leaver. If you are applying during your gap year and you're a domestic student, you'll need to sit UCAT the year that you apply.
So for graduate pathways, if you don't get in straight from high school, start in your bachelor degree, work towards graduate entry. Again, it is competitive to get places in these courses, but it's not impossible. You need to choose bachelor degree studies where you're going to academically flourish and also meet any prerequisite knowledge for the courses that you're looking at. For medicine and dentistry, we, we recommend you incorporate chemistry and biology and physics if you didn't do physics in high school. This is to prepare you for the graduate admissions test. So the Graduate Australian Medical Admissions Test is required for medicine and dentistry graduate applications. You would usually sit that in the late in the second year of your three-year bachelor degree or during March in the final year of your bachelor degree. You can sit the test more than once, the results valid for two years and if you've got more than one valid result you can choose which result to use so you choose which is the best result for your application. There's also an interview for graduate entry for medicine and dentistry, podiatric medicine and pharmacy and also optometry is a new course that we're offering Currently, that's by graduate entry only. So the Doctor of Optometry, our new course, if you're looking at getting into optometry, a Bachelor of Biomedical Science is required or an equivalent bachelor degree. You will need to be interviewed and you can apply for that when you're in the final year of your bachelor degree. The public health, we have an assured pathway for that. So if you're a school leader, you're interested in getting involved in, in health for like overall societal level for populations, then an assured pathway to public health could be for you. The ATAR minimum there is 92, and that one is not competitive entry. So if you meet the minimum, you will get offered a place in that assured pathway. You can do that via any of our comprehensive three-year bachelor degrees. So you could do that, combine that with other sciences and or even arts or commerce. For example, economics is quite a good match with public health. So that's another one that you might like to look at if you're interested in helping with health outcomes for entire communities. And that brings us to the end. So thank you all for being here.